when I was a kid, I was into some weird stuff, man. I'd go to my local library in Bebbington, which is a village up in the northwest of England. Nothing remarkable about Bebbington at all. The least remarkable place in the United Kingdom, perhaps on earth. Uh, but they have a library there. And I'd be going in there, pulling out books on magic and philosophy and religion and martial arts. And uh, through a series of events and coincidences, I was actually looking for a Jeet Kune Do school, which is uh, Bruce Lee's style of martial art. And I think I just missed the Jeet Kune Do class. And I showed up to the ninjutsu class. And it was uh, Togakure Ro Ru Nimpo Bujin Kantai Jitsu, as developed by Dr. Masaki Hatsumi. And I stopped with them for a few years and I bought the books and I read the books by Dr. Masaki Hatsumi. And at the same time as that, I was studying NLP. And at the same time as that, I was looking at uh, different schools of magic, Western style magic, and also the Kabbalah and Tarot in the uh, Jewish tradition. And I was looking for the consistent themes. I was looking for the ways in which these things tended to come together martial arts, mystical martial arts, not just ninjutsu, but Aikido as well, which has a similar mystical uh, background to it. And I'd see how these people were really, really big, but Aikido and ninjutsu, very, very big on breath, uh, unified with intent, unified with uh, sound made through the voice. In ninjutsu, it would be specific words. And in Aikido, there's a whole system of uh, sound there is chanting, but it's not, they chant and they chant Japanese words. You, you know some of them, Shiken Haramitsu Daikumiyo, Namyo Horenga Kyo, you know those ones. But in Aikido, you can chant sounds, just sounds. And I thought this was really interesting. In the magical traditions, in the Kabbalah, in the Tarot, there was something that was re returned to again and again around the word in the Old Testament, which is the original Jewish uh, book. It's in the beginning, there was the word. That's the very first thing. The first thing out of darkness, out of nothing is a thing. Out of nothing is a thing. And what brings everything into being from that first thing is a word. It all starts with a sound. A voice makes a sound and it constructs a word. And I was like, wow, man, that's, that's, uh, that's gnarly. At that time, I took acid as well. So I had all these books in there and then I would take acid on top of that and I'd be like, whoa, this is heavy, man. And I started to get into like, what is language? What is the purpose of language? How does language play out over time? What is the relationship of language to time? Is there, a, is there a timing of language? Is there a language of time? That kind of thing. These are the kinds of things you think about when you've taken way too many psychedelics. And what I noticed was a recurrent theme around the power of words. Whether these words are internal, which is your internal dialogue, and they direct the thoughts that you're thinking, or these words are external, they have power. Some people in mystical traditions chant. Um, for a while there, also in Bebbington, uh, you didn't know that such a boring town in the northwest of England could be such a nexus of, uh, of spirituality. We had one of the best ninjutsu instructors in Europe, a guy called Brim Morgan, who's on my doorstep. And one of the best Aikido instructors in Europe who did all the mystical stuff, the chanting and the drumming and the Zen meditation called Terry Ezra, both of them in Birkenhead, which is like a, you know, a pretty defunct, rough little town in the northwest of England. But there they were. And I also had access to a guy who'd, uh, who'd actually uh, lived in a Buddhist monastery for a while up in Spittal, which is near to Bevington, who taught me uh, Hindu chanting. And so, you have these traditions where they either control the breath, control the words through chanting, or take a total vow of silence. In the Christian mystic tradition, it's, it's very common, and Buddhist as well, to take a vow of silence. In Buddhism, uh, the idea would be because you must not lie. If you really want to clean up your karma, you, can, you can't lie. It's quite hard. The Buddhist discipline is hard. You must not lie. But they kind of figured out that every time we speak, we speak with an agenda 
and therefore every time we talk, we're kind of lying. So they're like, okay, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't speak for 30 days and let's see, let's see how you get all longer. Let's see how you get on. Act as though your words have power. They probably don't where you are in your life, if I may be so bold as to make that presupposition. Most of us don't live within some sort of spiritual discipline. We're not monks, we're not nuns. We're not sat there fasting and chanting for hours on end or, or taking a vow of silence. But the way we're gonna look at this is your words could have power. They could have power. They could be manifestations of intent. The spelling of your words could be literal spells that you send out into the world that have positive or negative um, permutations and consequences. So why don't we do the thought experiment and act as though our words have power? To not throw our words away cheaply, to not throw our thoughts away cheaply and say, okay, maybe there is something in the sacred word. Maybe there's something in me speaking. Maybe when I say something to somebody, if I start to act as though my words have weight, have meaning and have significance, maybe they will. If I start speaking as though my words are sacred and they create reality, not instantly, but maybe if I say it enough, it starts to build a reality, maybe I would speak differently. Maybe I'd speak with a different discipline. So I would like you to act as though your words are sacred. They do manifest an intent. And if you don't have an intent when you speak, what it manifests is white noise, empty signal, gunk. And maybe that's where we're up to right now. We're in a world that's full of white noise and empty signal. So maybe we should speak less, type less, comment less, try and think a little bit less so that the thoughts and the words that we have are infused with a little bit more power. I think that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Cheers.